All right, welcome back to Integral Physics. In the previous video, I worked out the discharge velocity of fluid from this reservoir as a function of the fluid height within the tank. In this video, we're going to calculate the time it will take for the entire tank to drain. Now, the difficult part of this problem is that as the tank starts to drain, the fluid height is going to decrease, which in turn is going to cause the fluid velocity and therefore the rate at which the tank drains to also decrease. You can see that here. If the height of the fluid within the tank decreases, the discharge is going to decrease. And what this means is that each liter of fluid which comes out of this discharge hole is going to take longer than the liter before it. So with that in mind, let's start working out our solution here at the discharge. See, if fluid is exiting the discharge at some velocity v, then in some time, we'll call it t, a column of fluid is going to exit the discharge, which has a length equal to vt. Where v is the discharge velocity and t is some hypothetical amount of time. Which means the volume of fluid that flows out of the discharge in some time t will be given by the cross-sectional area of the discharge multiplied by v dt as the discharge velocity multiplied by time. But remember, as fluid exits the reservoir, the fluid level, and therefore the discharge velocity is going to change. So this equation is really only true for an infinitely small amount of time. So what we're gonna do is use calculus to express this equation over an infinitely small amount of time. So rather than having some large volume of fluid come out of this discharge, we're gonna talk about an infinitely small amount of fluid which comes out of the discharge. We'll call it D volume, or an infinitely small change in volume. Now, our cross-sectional area and the velocity at the discharge are constants, at least in an instant, but it's this time which we're going to make infinitely short. So I'm going to call this dt, just like we would in calculus, an infinitely small change in time. And substituting in our value for the velocity at the discharge, this term which relates the volume of fluid which is going to exit the discharge in any given instant as a function of the cross-sectional area of the discharge and the height of the fluid within the reservoir. But remember, we're trying to find the time to drain the tank, which means we need to relate the volume of fluid discharged to the change in fluid height within the reservoir. So looking at the surface of the reservoir, if we allow an infinitely small of fluid out through the discharge, then that same change in volume is going to have to occur at the surface of the reservoir, which means change in volume is going to be equal to the cross-sectional area of our reservoir multiplied by the change in height within our reservoir, which we're going to call not h, the total height, but dh. the infinitely small change in height of the fluid level, which will occur in any given instant. So to solve this problem, all we're gonna do is set these two infinitesimal volumes equal to one another. As we're setting this up, there is one thing that I need to point out, and that is this change in volume as the fluid level is going downward is going to actually be a negative value. That is because we're losing height. So to solve for the total time, we're going to need to set up a differential equation that relates the total change in time to the total change in height. So to do that, we're going to separate out our variables. In this case, I'm actually going to take all of our variables over here on the left and pull them over here. And on the left, we're integrating all of our times. That is the total time from zero to T, where T is the total time it takes to drain this entire tank. And over here, we're gonna look at the total change in height, or we're gonna integrate all of these infinitesimally small changes in height from some initial height, h, to some final height, zero. Now you'll notice these limits of integration can be flipped if we simply remove this negative that occurred here when we talked about the decrease in height of our surface. Now you do the calculus behind this however you want. What I'm gonna to do to solve this is a u substitution. and we're left with this, an expression for the time to drain the entire tank. 
Now unsurprisingly, the larger the reservoir, the longer it will take to drain, and the smaller the discharge hole, the longer it will take to drain. What's not obvious, however, is that if we were to double the height of fluid within the tank, it would not take twice as long to drain the tank. And that's because, remember, the deeper the fluid in the tank, the faster the fluid will drain, which means doubling the fluid depth increases, but does not double the total drain time. And on that note, that's all for now.